is great. I really am happy. Jacket fits pretty horrible. It just learned from the last jacket. You have to look at yourself in the mirror. I want to be able to move. I want to be able to shake. I want to be able to shimmy. Gorgeous. Smells like real leather. Can't remember what I paid for it, but we got a winner. I don't know where my calculations went wrong. It's just interesting. Is that not cool? So here's a tentative look of it all put together. I think I'm gonna go with the red tie. So this story really starts back in September when about a week before a wedding I was going to, I pulled out the invitation to check on some details and I saw that it said cocktail attire. And I realized I didn't know what cocktail attire was. So I looked it up and I saw that it was suits, but much more personalized. You know, people will wear a different color trousers than the color of their jacket and they'll have different accessories on. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. And then I went and pulled out my one and only suit that I was going to wear to this wedding. And I realized that one, it had some moth holes in it, not the best. And two, it just didn't fit that great. And I immediately became less excited about a wedding that I was very excited to go to. But luckily I had another wedding coming up in October to redeem myself. So I decided to put together a cocktail attire outfit, but only with pre-owned clothes. Now I don't have much experience with higher end men's clothes, so I was kind of starting from scratch, but I had this idea that I was gonna have this nice kind of tweed jacket on with some wool pants because it was a fall wedding and that was kind of my starting point. So I said, you know what? Let's focus on tweed and we'll stick with a brand that I know, Polo Ralph Lauren. Now, typically I wear a 44 long. I have a bunch of Polo Ralph Lauren sports jackets slash blazers in 44 long that are up for sale. And I tried them all on at some point, but I didn't recall any of them fitting that well, but decided to dig them out and try again. And sure enough, they felt a bit too snug in the shoulders. So I figured I must be a 46 long, right? I also pulled out my one and only suit, a J. Crew Ludlow in 44 long that fits me okay, perhaps a bit tight, that I bought all the way back in 2015. I then got all the major measurements, and from my research, these are the five most important. Now it was time to hit the streets, so I scanned and scanned and scanned, mixing up different keywords, and found this one in 46 long, and compared the measurements to my J. Crew suit jacket, and they were pretty close lengthwise, but the shoulders were an inch or so wider, but I figured that was fine because I wanted some more room. The fabric looked nice and was very fall winter appropriate, so I dropped an offer and picked it up for $98 total. So the jacket has arrived. Feels like it has been worn, but that's okay. All right, initial thoughts. The jacket, it has been worn. It's a little bit more worn than I would have liked. Uh, fit wise though, not bad. Not bad at all. Jacket length is great. Shoulders feel good. Fit is good. If I went and checked myself out in the mirror and I can see that this jacket fits pretty terrible wide. I mean, you can see the shoulder, sh shoulder seam. There we go. Slopes over. If a tailor were to measure me, I'd wear a 44 along. But I, and I realized that, I don't know what I realized, that I'm a 44 long. If somebody saw me in it, they would just be like, oh, he looks horrible. It just fits a little frumpy. So maybe with this, with Polo Ralph, I'm not really sure. I'm a little lost, I'm a little discouraged. I'm not sure I'd even invest it given the quality of the material, given the state of the material. The material's nice, or was nice at one point in time, still is decent. We're back to the drawing board, for now. This is maybe a backup piece, not sure. So clearly I had no idea what I was doing. I don't know where I got the idea that you could have both a really figure flattering jacket that simultaneously gave you the range of movement to go play a baseball game. I knew better than this. I've worn suits before. I, I'm not sure what happened there. Mental lapse, major mental lapse. So I had to go back to the drawing board. I decided to scrap the tweed idea because there just wasn't enough selection or there is enough selection out there, but I would have to been more patient to find what I wanted. So. I scrapped that, decided to just kind of stick with like a normal suit separate, just regular wool cloth. And to get a better idea of fit, I said, you know what? You live in New York City, why don't you go try some jackets on? So that's what I did. Off to go try on some jackets on this rainy New York day. Oh. What's going on? First stop, Bloomingdale's.
All right, not a Mont Blanc for a fancy pen. Just kidding. Two supplies. on the list, Brooks Brothers. And last stop, why not? Boop, boop, Jaker. So I'm standing here in Times Square, getting ready to uh, head back home, and I'm exhausted. I tried on close to a dozen different brands of suits, probably tried on a total of 40 different suits, well not suits, but jackets, you know what I mean, and disappointed a good number of salespeople, I'm sorry about that, I apologize, I understand y'all work on commission, sorry about that, and uh, yeah, I'm exhausted. So I learned a lot from this shopping trip, and I was able to find three brands of suits, or suit jackets, or blazers, whatever you want to call it, that fit me well, and it was Hart Schaffner Marks, Robert Graham, and Suit Supply. Now I immediately tabled Robert Graham because it just wasn't the style I was going for and started shopping again. I started my search with Hart Schaffner Marks. I found a fair amount of used pieces, but the ones in my size, fit, and desired colors were priced alarmingly low, even though they were new with tags. Now maybe these were just great deals, but my guess is they were from the brand's economic lines and decided to table Hart Schaffner Marks and focus on Suit Supply. So I started digging and found this jacket in 44 long that looked clean and sharp and was in the Nepali fit. Look what I tried on a suit supply and fit great. Described as a regular fit cut with extra room at the chest, shoulder, and sleeves. And automatically this jacket became my top contender. I deepened my inspection by comparing its measurements to my own suit, they were very close, and inquiring about its history, learning it was a seller's personal jacket and that it had zero alterations. So I dropped an offer and ended up paying $54 total. So now that I had the jacket ordered, it was time to focus on the rest of the outfit, including shoes, pants, belt, shirt, and tie. Now, starting with pants, I had in mind I wanted a pair of wool trousers, not chinos, that sat kind of high, had a nice crease, and had a nice kind of flowy, roomy fit to them. I decided to go with Brooks Brothers because of their comprehensive sizing and felt a 36 in Madison or traditional, their roomiest fit was the way to go. Plenty of room for my thighs and I could always have the legs tapered and waist brought in. Found this pair that looked super clean, had been hen and had an appropriate waist size and a unique brown gray color and liked or hearted them and a bit later received an offer from the seller for $28 total and decided to buy. Now for shoes I wanted something that was pretty good quality and could be recrafted or resold and I'd had good luck with Allen Edmonds in the past, so I started with them. I searched Allen Edmonds 12 and a half and found this pair which had only been worn once with one bit at $100 and focused in. Ideally, I would have preferred a pair without the broguing, but to find this style and size and this condition at this price was summer wear, so I felt the small sacrifice was okay. Won the auction and paid a grand total of $114. All right, we got the suit supply jacket in, so let's see how we did. All right, first impressions. Looks clean, looks pretty solid. Doesn't look too heavily worn. But most important, here we go. So it's funny, it's hard to see how this thing fits after I learned from the last jacket. You have to look at yourself in the mirror. All right, so I just went and checked myself out in front of a mirror and I'm pretty happy. I mean, the lapels lay really nice, which is usually a problem for me. Often they go like this and they bow out. Shoulders look decent. Back, not too much crinkle. Good amount of room right here, pretty comfortable, decent here. Like I said, I think the sleeves, I'm gonna let the sleeves out maybe just a bit, but overall, I take it. Excited for the rest of this outfit to come together. Now for shirts, I was leaning either towards a white shirt or a light striped shirt, and I wasn't sure which I wanted, so I shot for both. So I became familiar with Eaton from my thrifting days and knew it to be a fairly prolific brand with a really good reputation for quality, so I kicked off my search with them. Their website has a really comprehensive sizing guide, and I determined I was a 4317 contemporary fit and started to dig around and found this striped shirt that looked to be in excellent condition at a very reasonable price. The picture had a ruler added for reference, which was only so helpful, but I assumed that the shirt's dimensions would pretty much match the website, so I dropped a light offer and picked it up for $26. Now, I wasn't too keen on buying a pre-owned white dress shirt for obvious reasons, so I focused in on new with tags or new without tags, 
and simply searched white 3617 shirt or 3616 and filtered to new with tags or new without and found this J. Crew Ludlow white button down collar in 1636 with only stock photos. Asked for some actual photos and saw it was a 1636 slip. The seller didn't have measurements, so I dug around the internet and found them, and they were right on the money, so I went for it and snagged the shirt for $40. I totally should have asked for clean, concise measurements for both shirts, and frankly had no excuse for not. And, well, you'll see. The pants are in, and I forgot to set up the camera when I tried them on, but they fit great, and I'm gonna show you anyway. Ta-da! Looking great. Color is interesting i don't know how best to describe it it's almost this brownish gray but they're an excellent shape nice clean crisp haven't been worn much i mean looking good a little bit of weight a little bit of room here probably don't have to have them taken in in the back because that's a place you can get them adjusted is right back here decent room in the hips plenty of length gonna have to have them hemmed which is no problem at all i can't decide if i want to get a taper or not on them I can walk well, I can dance well. Remember, these. this is a wedding attire, so I wanna be able to move, I wanna be able to shake, I wanna be able to shimmy. Less than 30 bucks, can't beat it. And we also got in the Allen Edmonds. Apparently these have only been worn once. Looking good. I don't think the seller was lying. These things don't look to have been worn hardly at all. Little bit of that action, a little of that action. There we go. I should have a shoehorn. So I'm gonna be careful not to hurt the back. So far, so good. So far, so good. If anything, they're actually a tiny bit long, but I don't think that's gonna be a problem. They're actually very comfortable right out of the box. I'm not 100% sold on fit. Ultimately, they would work. They're in the ballpark and they're a very nice universal shoe. Pants and jacket have been great, minus that first jacket. Shoes, decent, we're getting there. And I'm quite confident if I don't want these, I can quickly sell them for about what I paid for them. So now I had the jacket and the pants, so I headed to a tailor to get some adjustments and they recommended I not move the jacket sleeve. I'll explain more on that later. And that they could easily do a nice little taper without messing up the seam here. So that's what I opted for. And a hem. Now on to the tie. Now I'm not an expert on tie, jacket, shirt combos, but I knew I wanted something with an extreme texture, so I leaned into wool as opposed to silk. So I started searching red wool tie and vintage wool tie and burgundy vintage wool tie, focusing in on the $15 to $40 range. I spotted this very vintage Polo Ralph Lauren tie and hoping to redeem myself after the failed jacket and represent one of my favorite brands, I went in for a closer look. Love the interesting texture, subtle logo, and antique red color. My description, not an official one, and snagged for a total of $23. And for the belt, I wanted something super simple. Black leather brass buckle. So I started by searching black leather brass belt and narrowed to just pre-owned, focusing in on the $25 to $45 range and noticed a fair amount of the belts were from Coach, a brand that I then remembered was a respectable leather goods company for many decades, so focused in on Coach and found this one in excellent shape, dropped an offer and started its journey home for $31. We got a bunch of stuff in today, well, over the last couple days to try on. We've got two shirts, a belt and a tie and a tie clip. Uh, first, we're gonna do the belt because I don't have a belt on and my pants are falling down, so. All right, going with the old timer today. It's this thing will rack focus. Look at that blade. That, that, that knife's been used right there. It smells like real leather. Looks good. Let's see if it fits. Beautiful. All right, up next, what I believe to be the white shirt. Looks good, looks clean. I think we got a winner. Not bad, can't beat it. I can't remember what I paid for it, but we got a winner for sure. The Eton or Eton, or maybe I'm just pronouncing it all wrong. E-T-O-N, sure. Let's see what we got. Okay, Ooh, it's very soft material. Collar solid, no complaints there. This material feels so nice. I guess that's what you get when you buy a uh, over $200 dress shirt. Let's see what we got. Doesn't matter how nice the fabric feels if it doesn't fit. Uh, I don't know where my calculations went wrong, but this shirt 
shirt fits great except for the sleeves. Not good. Not gonna work. Vintage Polo Ralph Lauren. Ooh, look at the packaging. I do like the texture of it. You can just, it's just interesting. It just, let me get a look. Buying ties online is great. It's like the easiest thing to buy because they're, it's just so straightforward next to belts. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, and I forgot the tie clip. Check this thing out. I mean, is that not cool? Look at that. Look at that thing. Is that not cool? All right, so overall, this haul that it just came in has been a success. Minus that one shirt, but I wasn't planning on wearing that anyways, but I'm still kind of annoyed. Luckily, I didn't pay too much money for it. I don't know where my calculations went wrong. I'm not sure, but uh, so far we're looking good. And next, I just gotta get the pants back. We're gonna put it all together and All parts have officially been gathered and tailored, and now it's time to try it all on. Oh, and I have a few additions to the party. So I was a little bit worried about that tie, so I went ahead and ordered a another one, and I wasn't sure it'd get here in time. So I'll show you what I got. And I also got the only thing I bought new, besides underwear, but I don't see those. A pair of socks. Let's see if y'all approve or not. Let's get dressed, or I'll get dressed. I don't know. All right, some initial thoughts. I wish I had another button on this shirt. So when I was at the tailor, they explained to me that if you can button the if you can button the shirt a little tighter, it'll tuck, it'll pull it into your wrist closer, and I wouldn't have to bring out the jacket. So unfortunately, that is one thing that it's an easy fix because you can just get another button put on, but I don't think I have time. So that's one little boo-boo. And now it's just a question of top. What do y'all, what do y'all think? This lighting is very tough and I apologize. So here's a tentative look of it all put together. I think I'm gonna go with the red tie. Sure, there's plenty to critique as far as proportions and color combination and all the rest, but for really less than I think $300, put together this entire outfit, and I think I feel good in it. Now I'm really happy with how this outfit came together and I had a lot of fun putting it together as well. And I also felt really comfortable at this wedding and I look forward to going to other weddings and events and mixing up different pants and jackets and shirts and ties and feeling comfortable at those events as well. And I put this all together at a fraction of the cost of what it cost of what it would have cost new and uh, here's a quick breakdown of what everything I paid and what it would have cost new Now I did have some mistakes with the jacket and the shirt, but I'm sure I'll find a home from them. And that just kind of happens when you're buying pre-owned clothes. But I hope you learned something and I hope this inspires you to perhaps upgrade your wardrobe at a fraction of the cost by buying pre-owned clothes online. And thanks for tuning in to Coyote Sharp and have a great day.